All right, and we are live. Welcome back with Murphy Mac on another episode of the Fitness Beginner Podcast. Hope you're all having a good day today. Okay, uh, sorry I couldn't do the podcast yesterday. I know I normally do it on Monday, but I had a few little things going on that we had to do after work yesterday, so I couldn't get on here and do it. But with that being said, we hopped on here tonight. We're going to drop some value for y'all, and we're going to do it big. All right. You probably can see by the title of this podcast, this is the 40th episode of my podcast. I know, 40th. It's not really a large number, but it's pretty big for me. I've been doing this podcast for a while now, so it's taken me a while to get 40 episodes. But now that I'm actually doing it consistently on a weekly basis, the numbers are starting to get up there pretty big. I know 40 is not really a big milestone. I'm really waiting to hit that 50 in about 10 episodes. So that'll be the big one. We'll have to do something cool, something special for 50th episode. I don't really know what I'm going to do just yet, but we'll see. We'll come up with something. Hopefully, y'all stick around with me long enough to see what I end up doing uh, on the 50th episode. The topic of today's podcast is, since it's the 40th episode, I got 40 different fitness trends or topics, ideas, diets, whatever, 40 different fitness trends, and I'm going to rank them, in my personal opinion, if I think they're overrated or if I think they're underrated. So these are not like scientific based or anything. This is strictly my personal opinion and, and what I think about these topics. So that's what we're going to do. But before we're going to hop into the podcast, I'm going to update y'all about myself. Still just, just doing the usual training for the triathlon. Nothing new, nothing crazy. Uh, I am kind of updating my office area a little bit. So if you're watching the video version, you kind of see I got a different uh, camera angle. So now I put my camera up above. Uh, so it's a little looks a little different, but we're playing around with it, trying to figure out trying to figure out how I like my setup and how I want to do like the layout of my office and how I do the the podcast setup. But I don't know. We're gonna tinker with it. We're gonna figure it out how I like it the best, and we're gonna keep playing around with it. But other than that, I wanted to apologize for last episode. The the sound quality was trash. I know it was. I tried to fix it the best I could. There was a lot of like background like hissing or humming. And I tried to, in my editing software, try to like turn it down a little bit. And when I did, it like turned the volume way down on the podcast. So you may have to turn your volume up a little bit more to listen to it. But it would have been a lot worse if I'd have left like that hissing and humming in there. And there was still a little bit of humming in it, but I toned it down a lot. Like it was, it was bad. But the weird thing was when I filmed the podcast, I didn't hear none of that noise because I was I monitor it in my headphones and. None of that was there when I did the podcast live, so I don't know why I was in the video after the fact, but oh well. It's there. Hopefully y'all y'all could listen through the bad audio and still get some value from the from the episode. But today talk oh, I forgot. Last week I didn't do my quick tip or my motivational quote. Um Honestly, I was kinda running short on time for that podcast because it was gonna be so long anyways, because we did a hundred questions. But we're going to get back to it this week with a quick tip. So my quick tip for you today is when you're doing any kind of like calf exercise. So if you're doing like a seated calf raise or a standing calf raise or calf extension, when you're doing these lifts, um, what I like to do is I like take, turn my toes out just a little bit. So not too far to where your toes are like straight out, but turn them out just a few degrees. And for me, this, this makes me feel like I feel like I hit the inside of my calves a little bit better, like the inside part. Uh, I could put a little more emphasis on it just by turning my toes out a little bit. So that's what I like to do. So y'all can try it out on your next leg day. The next time you do calves, try it out. Just turn your toes out a little bit. Instead of having your feet like straight forward, just turn them away from your body a little bit uh, and see if it helps you hit your calves a little bit. It may not It may not help you, but it does for me. So give it a try. That's my little quick tip. You can do it seated or standing either way. Um, but yeah, that's what I like to do. So that's the quick tip for today. Now we're going to hop into the 40 fitness trends, and we're going to rank them overrated or underrated. So number one, wearable fitness technology. So smartwatches or fitness trackers. See, this one I'm kind of I'm kind of leaning on both ends of this. So as far as like accuracy goes, they're overrated because I don't think they're as accurate as accurate. I guess I said that right. Yeah, as most people think they are like i think they're they're pretty accurate but they're not like right on they're not spot on they're still like 
some technology error there that they're getting better at though. I ain't gonna lie, they they're improving, they're getting better, they're t- they're dialing it in. And the more you wear that w- that watch or tracker or whatever, it'll get better at tracking your all your body stats and stuff as well, or like your everything that smartwatches track. So they're a little overrated right now. Do I think they're gonna get better in the future? Yes, I think eventually they will be pretty spot on, and they're just gonna keep improving. Um, but as far as like fitness as a whole, I think the wearable fitness technology is is pretty much underrated because it gives you a lot of value, like a lot of data that you wouldn't have otherwise. So you can track a lot of things, like anything, like your heart rate, all that kind of stuff. You can track a lot of that, and I think it's underrated because people don't utilize that. Like they don't use that to their advantage. Yeah, they may be wearing it and they may be tracking it, but they're not actually using that to to help their workouts, to help their their long distance runs or long distance swims, whatever they're training for. They'll 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 collect all this data and not really use it. I'm I'm bad about this too. I wear my Apple Watch pretty much every day, uh, just to like track my steps or whatever, and I don't really use that data to help me very much because I don't I don't wear my watch when I'm working out because I'm scared I'm gonna like crack it or something, but. Yeah, I think people could get more use out of the technology if they would use it more. Like, they would actually apply all the data that's given you. So, that's wearable fitness technology. So, I know I didn't really give y'all an answer. I, I said both, but it depends on what, what angle you're looking at for that one. Number two, body weight workouts. So, push-ups, squats, uh, something that just requires no equipment. These are severely underrated. Body weight workouts are super underrated especially for beginners. Everybody thinks they gotta get in the gym, they gotta lift weights. That's not the case. If you're a beginner, you gotta think, you've never, well you may have worked out in the past, but like if you're a beginner, you're not working out at all. So your body's not having any kind of resistance towards it. So your body weight, and once you start working out with body weight, that's a lot more than what you was doing before. So your body, it's still gonna like affect your muscles and affect your body, because you wasn't doing nothing before and now you're doing at least your body weight, which is, I know it's not a lot of weight, but it's more than what you were doing before. So you can still see great progress and great benefits from doing bodyweight exercises. So I think everybody should do them, especially starting out. Bodyweight exercises are good. And especially uh, also starting out, a lot of people don't want to go to the gym. Like They're scared of the gym. They're intimidated by the gym. They don't know what to do in the gym. So the good thing about bodyweight exercises is you can do them anywhere. You can do them anytime. You can do them in your living room while you're watching Netflix. You can do it. Nothing's going to stop you. And you literally, all you got to do is search on YouTube. 15 minute body weight exercise, 30 minute body weight workout. Like it's super easy and you can do it anywhere, anytime, and you can get a decent little workout in. So body weight exercises, definitely underrated. Number three, high intensity, high intensity interval training. So like HIT workouts, HIT training. Uh, this is pretty like a pretty new trend. A lot of people do this, but I think they're overrated. So do I think it's a good workout? Yeah, I think it's good and you can get some good like cardio in and a good little workout in a short amount of time but i think they're overrated because people lean on them more than they should like people think they're better for them than actually like resistance training and trying to build muscle because um, that build muscle res- resistance training is going to be better for you over time so hit workouts yeah you may do them for a while but you're probably going to quit doing them after a while you're probably going to stick around i mean yeah you'll, you may see some results really quick like but you're going to plateau pretty fast. I mean, unless your goal is like cardio, then yeah, they're pretty good for cardio. And you do, you will gain a little muscle. Like you do work out, do a little bit of resistance training, but eventually I think you're going to plateau and you're going to need to incorporate some kind of like actual uh, resistance training into your workout. So I think HIIT workouts are a little overrated. Number four, group fitness classes. Uh, I think these are underrated. Underrated. because Because like the group atmosphere it creates that exactly what it creates that positive atmosphere it creates people around you kind of lifting you up pushing you uh make like uh cheering you on like trying to make you do better even if you go like with your friend you're gonna compete with your friend whether you know it or not i just feel like all humans have like competitiveness in them somewhere deep down so you're gonna like want to do better you're gonna if you see your friend going fast you're gonna pick it up you're gonna go faster too and in classes, like people can can encourage you, and you don't have to think about what you're doing. Like they, the instructor literally tells you what to do, so you just follow the instructor. You never have to think about what you're doing, why you're doing, or whatever. You just do what they're telling you to do, and it's pretty easy. It makes your workout 
a lot simpler and you can get a pretty good workout in them. So I think they're pretty underrated. I mean, they have all kinds of fitness classes, like cycling classes, dance classes, strength classes. Uh, they have like Pilates, yoga, there's all kinds. So I, de- I definitely think they're underrated. Uh, also, another way that they're underrated is that men don't use them. So normally group fis- fitness classes are n- like probably 95% women because, I, well, I really don't know why, but women have just like made it a thing. I think, I guess men don't want somebody telling them what to do or something. So they don't really do the fitness classes. But I think a a lot of men could get some good, uh, some really good workouts in, in a group class. And I guess they don't want to be in there with a bunch of women either. Because they're like, I'm the only dude in here. This is kind of weird. But I think men could get a lot of use out of them. So they're definitely underrated for men as well. If you've never done a cycling class, I highly encourage you to do a cycling class. Like they're tough. They're hard workouts, but they're very rewarding. Like they're fun. So I've actually done a couple of cycling classes, and I really enjoy them. Number five, virtual and online fitness classes and programs. I don't know. I'm going to say overrated. I think they're overrated because, one, you don't get, like, that gym atmosphere, so you don't get as motivated to work out. Like, if you're doing them in your house, you're not as motivated, and you're less likely to do them. Like, you're less likely to stick to it over time. But that being said, they are very convenient. Like if you actually gonna do it, they're very convenient. You ain't gotta leave, you ain't gotta nowhere go nowhere. Like it's just pull it up on your computer, you can even pull it up on like your TV or something. So I think they're very I don't know, it can be it can be either way. It can be overrated or underrated. I'm trying to think which one. If I had to pick one. So if it's just like a like a PDF or like a cookie cutter program that you buy, I would say they're definitely overrated because you're probably not gonna do it. But as far as hiring like an online coach underrated an online coach can be so beneficial that people don't realize because they think you have to have like an in-person personal trainer but really an in-person personal trainer they're only with you for that one hour 30 minutes however long you're in the gym and then the rest of the week they're not with you anymore but if you have a virtual personal trainer they're literally with you 24 7 you have access to them all the time so definitely underrated when it comes to fitness coaches online all right number six functional fitness training so like movements that focus on like everyday activities, uh, definitely underrated for sure. People, everybody needs to be doing functional, some kind of functional fitness training. Like you need to be doing everyday activities like squatting, bending over. So you gotta think about all the things you do during your day. Like you literally bend over to tie your shoes, you squat to pick things up, you you try to scratch your back, which are, you try to reach around your back, try to scratch your back. So just doing like functional movements, very, very underrated. And people, when, when you don't use things, over time, you will lose those things. So if you're not putting yourself in those stretched positions, if you're not using it, you will lose it over time. So functional fitness is very underrated. Number seven, mind-body workouts, such as yoga, Pilates, uh, like meditation, breathing exercises, underrated, for sure, underrated. Um, stretching is so important. So doing a yoga class can go a long ways. Meditation, this is really good to work. Like your mind it can can bring you back down to earth, get your mind right, get your body positive. I actually, I've been doing, I've been experimenting with meditation lately and I'm getting better at it. It's kind of tough uh, at first, but what I found that helps me is I can, I'll do like a guided meditation. So I'll look up a video on YouTube and it'll guide you through it. And it makes it a little bit easier. So I like doing the guided meditation is a little bit better. So yeah, these are definitely underrated. These can help you a lot when it comes to like your mindset and it comes to uh, just feeling better if you do like stretching and things like that. So number eight, boxing and kickboxing workouts. So they're kind of like a high high intensity full body workout. I'm going to say definitely underrated. Um, anybody that does boxing or kickboxing, they know how good of a workout it is. But like other other people that don't really do it, they don't understand how much cardio you're actually doing. It's like most people think when they think of cardio, they're like, oh, we're gonna run, or we're gonna bike, or we're gonna swim. You never really think of kickboxing or boxing because it's it's kind of it's kind of different, but it's very very taxing on like your cardiovascular system. So it can be a good like cardio workout, a little full body workout. So definitely underrated. Um, Another one that go, kind of goes along with boxing is jump rope. Dude, jump rope is so underrated. Jump rope is one of the best like cardio exercises you can do. So 
I would definitely say incorporate some jump roping into your your daily or your your, your cardio routine. Number nine, personal training and coaching services, which offer personalized fitness plans and support. Uh, definitely underrated. Um, a lot of people think that they can just do it on their own, and that's just not the case. Because one, you don't know that much about fitness because you haven't been doing it, and two. You need somebody to push you. Like the reason you ain't lost that 10 pounds before is because you you tried it for a month and it didn't work, so you quit. You need somebody there to push you. Like you need to have that person to hold you accountable. And another thing is when you hire a personal trainer, you're obviously paying money. Like you're you're investing into your fitness, into your health. So when you invest money, you get a lot more, a lot better return on your investment because you're more willing to do it. Like if you know you spent 250 bucks a month on this personal trainer, you're going to be more willing to do it. You're like, I just spent all this money. I'm at least going to go work out my money's worth. So it makes you more invested. So that's why I, I 100% say you should hire a personal trainer because it's going to make you more invested. It's going to get you better results and they know what they're doing. So they're going to be able to get you better results. They're going to be able to tell you what to do, what workouts to do, what exercises, uh, what to eat, what not to do. So they're going to help you in like every aspect of your fitness journey. But the number one thing I think why it's overrated, I mean underrated, is because it's because of the financial investment. As soon as you put money, as soon as you involve money into it, everything changes. So you, you start investing into a personal trainer and watch how your, your results actually happen. All right, number 10, outdoor fitness activities. So hiking and rock climbing. So this one's kind of like the boxing one to me, uh, except it's outdoor, but definitely underrated. Dude, hiking it's such a good exercise because, one, it's, it's just like walking. Walking is a good exercise, but hiking, normally you're doing it up and down hills, up and down mountains, things like that. So hiking is definitely underrated when it comes to just exercise. And hiking is pretty, it's not that taxing on your body. So you can do it and not like really be sore or hurting the next day. Now, rock climbing, that's a little different. That's that's definitely a, a lot more strenuous exercise. So you're definitely going to be sore. It's going to put some some strain on your body, but it's still a good workout. Like rock climbing, I don't know if I ever like did one of the little rock walls before, but they're pretty hard to climb up. So yeah, it's definitely a great workout. Uh, do rock climbers are literally some like the strongest people that you can meet. Yeah, they may not lift all the weight in the gym, but they can literally like hold their body weight up for hours at a time. They're like super strong, super uh strong grip strength, and just super strong like core. So yeah, rock climbers climbers are pretty. Pretty, they honestly they're they're like a beast. If you ever watched um, American Ninja Warrior, most of those people that compete on there, they have a rock climbing background, and it just makes sense because they're they're doing a lot of upper body workouts on American Fitness uh, American Ninja Warrior. All right, number eleven, recovery and wellness practices such as foam rolling and stretching, uh, definitely underrated. I and I have this problem because I don't do it as much as I should, but I've been trying to do it more lately uh foam rolling also using like the little massager guns i have one of those i just bought a cheap one off amazon and it actually works really well and I, I took it to work so i do it like when i'm sitting at my desk at work but yeah definitely underrated recovery is huge when your muscles are sore and you got to repair them so you can get back to working out at full potential because if you're going in there and you're hurting you're not gonna be able to work out as hard uh and you're just not you're not gonna get as good of a workout in so Definitely start doing some foam rolling, some stretching, or use like the little muscle massager gun. Number 12, technology enhanced fitness equipment. So think of like uh, a Peloton or like a Tonal. Tonal is like a, a hydraulic system basically that you put on the wall and it's all electric. I don't know. It's hard to explain if you don't know what Tonal is. But yeah, it's basically like technology based. Uh, fitness equipment, but I'll say underrated. If you ain't never used a Peloton, I highly suggest it. We have one, and I love it. It's literally just like a, a regular spin cycle bike that you would uh, do cycling on, but it has like a big screen in front of it, and it has like, you can watch all kinds of coaches doing like classes on it, or you can do like scenic rides where you're literally like riding through the hills of wherever you want to. You can go literally like anywhere in the world. So I'll say it's underrated. Because it gives you a little bit more motivation to work out. So yeah, there's a lot of good technology-based equipment out there nowadays that 
honestly, I think it's kind of the future of fitness. Like, I think it's going to keep getting more and more popular because it's more, it's more, uh, what's the word I'm thinking for? More convenient for a lot of people. Number 13, uh, nutritional supplements. Overrated. Supplements are definitely overrated for sure. Um, everybody thinks they got to have supplements when they're first starting out, which is not the case. You should be eating a balanced diet. And if you are, then you're getting all the nutrients that you need throughout your diet. But with that being said, nutri- uh, supplements can be very good to help you supplement for extra nutrients that you need in your diet. So if you need an extra protein, it's great to take a su- protein supplement to help you hit that protein goal. But I wouldn't rely on like don't rely on uh, supplements to hit all your nutrient levels that you need. So, yeah, supplements are definitely overrated. Number 14, low impact workouts. So swimming, rowing, uh, these are workouts that are like easier on the joints. These are definitely over, uh, underrated. If you ain't ever swam before, it's hard. I promise. I've been doing it a lot lately. It's tough. Swimming is tough. But the good thing about it is it's not taxing on your body. Like it's not hard on your joints. Like running. Running's kind of hard on your knees, your ankles, your calf muscles. Because you're like pouncing up and down on them the whole time. Swimming, it's not like that. It's pretty pretty easy on the joints. So low impact workouts, I would say underrated. Number 15, resistance bands. So resistance bands are used instead of weights. Um, the farther you stretch them, the harder they get, like the more resistance they have. So you can kind of, if you want it to be easier, you can stand closer to where you have the resistance band, or you can just step back and it'll make it a little bit harder. But I think they're underrated because not a lot of people use them. I like to use them to warm up. They're good warm up exercises to me because they're, they're not very high. Like they're not very heavy. So you can do them to kind of loosen. I use it every day on my push days when I'm doing chest or shoulders. I use one every day to loosen up my shoulders because you can get kind of stiff up there. So resistance bands, definitely underrated. Number 16, shorter and more efficient workouts. Um, I would say they're overrated. So like kind of the hit workouts are kind of in this uh, category. They're overrated because people try to rush the process. They're trying to rush it. And they're trying to get in and out as fast as they can so they don't get as much benefit as they could. No, I'm not saying you should be in there for two hours, but I think a good good hour, 45 minutes to an hour, is a good time to be in the gym to work out. When you try to rush everything and put it into 20 minutes, you're you're not going to put as much effort into it as you could if you would just take a break in between each each set. So you're you're leaving a lot of results on the table. I mean, if you're in a crunch, then yeah, they're they're good workouts and you – if that way you can at least go to the gym and say you work or like worked out for the day. But if you, you should plan for a little bit extra time and actually get like a good workout in. So 45 minutes to an hour, I say is a good time, but honestly, like 30 minutes, it'll do the trick if that's all you have. So shorter workouts, I would say overrated. Number 17, recovery and meditation apps. Uh, so guided meditation. So I kind of hit on this earlier. Uh, yeah, definitely over, uh, underrated. Meditation is good to, to get your mind in the right, right, get you in the right mindset, to get you uh, looking, having a positive out, outlook on life. It's going to help you when it comes to your workouts because you're going to be kind of more motivated to go in there and work out because you've already like got your mind right. So then you got, then you're going to be thinking, oh, I need to get my body right now. So then you're going to go work out and it's just going to be put you in a better mood, get you prepared for the day. Whatever life throws at you throughout the day, you're going to be more prepared to take that on. And it's good for like, Stress relief and things like that. Number 18, body positive fitness. So this like encourages self-love, acceptance, regardless of body shape or size. Definitely overrated. Like honestly, I hate the whole body positive movement. Like, yeah, if you want to be positive in your body, great. That's good for you. Kudos. But if you fat, you still fat. Like, ain't nothing stopping you from yeah, you may be happy that you can eat at the Twinkies every day. But you're still not healthy. Like you're not in shape. You're you need to you need to work out. Like you need to be healthy. Uh, it's gonna help you live longer. It's gonna help you have less uh, health problems. It's gonna keep you out of the hospital. Keep you from sitting in doctors' offices all day because you got health problems. You got I don't know anything that comes along with being overweight. So no, I don't I don't agree with the body positive fitness. So if if you're one of those body positive people, I'm sorry. We just I don't we don't agree. I think you should be working on your on your health, on your fitness, 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not mad at you if you're one of these people. So if you think your body looks good the way it is, then, hey, kudos to you. You live your best life. You do you, and I'm gonna do me. But if you actually want to get healthier and live a longer life, a healthier life, then that's what I'm here for. Number 19, online fitness communities and social networks. So these kind of provide support and accountability. Definitely underrated. Uh, you should get on Facebook and join some kind of fitness group. There's tons of them online, tons of them. And they're good for like support and accountability. But you got to find the right one, though, because there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of rude people in this world, especially on social media. I call them, well, everybody calls them keyboard warriors because they can hide their face behind a keyboard. But uh, some of these groups actually have like a lot of positivity going on to them, in them. And they will actually help like support you and give you advice and they'll hold you accountable and things like that. So you got to find the right one. I would experiment which ones you're in because you already know how Facebook is. It's it's a nightmare on there sometimes. People are just rude for, for no reason. Like, I really don't understand it. But if you can't find like an online fitness community, find like a community that's like local. Like find some, some local friends or some local pe- people at the local gym that, that kind of work out together and try to get into their community. Like try to hang out with them, try to get a little workout in with them. That's what I would suggest. Number 20, mobility training, underrated. Like I said earlier, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So you need to start working on your mobility. Uh, put yourself in those weird stretch positions, and this is going to help you feel more loose. It's going to help you be able to touch your toes, things like that. So definitely stretch. Mobility training is good. Uh, you want to train in full range of motion. Don't do no half reps. It's going to be good for your joints. Good for your range of motion, good for flexibility. 21, wearable heart rate monitors. So which track heart rate during exercise for better intensity control. Uh, We kind of hit on this with the wearable technology earlier, but heart rate monitors, I would say still overrated. Heart heart rate monitors are a little more uh, accurate than a, a smartwatch, but they're still overrated because people aren't really using these to their advantage, their full advantage. I mean, yeah, people that train for like triathlons and Ironmans and things like that, they will use it, but just normal average people don't really use these, so they're not getting any benefit from them. So I'll say they're overrated. 22, nutrition coaching and meal delivery services. Uh, Definitely underrated. People need to use these meal prepping services. I actually use one myself. Uh, I have one called Every Plate. And they send you all the ingredients that you need to cook your dinner. They give you all the ingredients with the exact uh, portion sizes. And it tells you, gives you directions on how to cook it. And it just makes things a lot simpler. So this helps me actually stick to like, eating healthy. Because you can order, you can pick the foods that you want. Like It'll have different options each week. And you can pick which ones you want. And it'll tell you like the calories and stuff like that. So it's very easy to stick to your diet, to your goals. Because you know everything that's in it. And you cooked it yourself. So... You also know like what actually is going into them. And then also they have meal prepping services that will literally cook all your food for you. And they'll go ahead and like put it in little meal prepping trays. And you can just pop them in the microwave and eat them whenever. You can take them for your lunch. You can eat them from dinner. Eat them on the go. So, yeah, you're going to pay for them. They're a little more expensive, but that's because they're doing everything for you. Like it ain't no, it's, uh, it's less expensive than if you were to go out to a restaurant and eat. I can promise you that. So, yeah, you're going to pay a little bit more for them, but that's because they took the time and effort to get all the ingredients, to cook them, to prep them, to ship them to you or whatever. So they did the work. They got to make their money too. So yeah, you're going to pay for it, but they're very, very beneficial and it helps you stick to your your diet a whole lot easier. I actually just meal prep my own food for my lunches and I do it myself. So yeah, it takes a little time, but it's worth it and it helps me stick to my diet. So I'm going to keep doing it for foreseeable future. Next. Uh, athletic apparel that blends fashion and function, such as athleisure wear. I must say they're underrated. Yeah, you're thinking, oh, I can just wear any clothes in there and work out. Yeah, that's true. But it's like that saying, look good, feel good, play good. If you go and get you a nice little new little workout outfit, you already know you're going to be feeling yourself when you go in the gym. You're going to get a nice little workout in. You're going to be killing it. So if, you want, if you're one of those people like, and you want to look good, then then do that and wear it to the gym. If that's what helps you, if that gives you to actually go work out, then yeah, I say get you some some nice athletic apparel. I actually, I mean, everybody wants to look good in the gym, you know. So 
So I'll get you something nice to wear. Uh, I actually just kind of started getting actual gym clothes. I never wore gym clothes before. I always just wore whatever t-shirts and shorts that I had. But I've actually bought some like the little tank top workout shirts and stuff now, and I really like them. So I think athletic apparel, I would say underrated. 24, self-mild fascial release. Uh, this is So this goes again back to like the massage gun, massage balls. It's going to help release muscle ten tension. So definitely underrated because they're just not used that often. I mean, I don't know. I guess you could say these are overrated in a way because even if you do use them, you're still going to be sore. Like you still, you can do them and they'll help, but you're still going to be sore after. So actually, yeah, I'm going to change my answer. I'm going to say they're overrated because, yeah, they may help a little bit, but it ain't like they're taking it away all the way. Like, they're not getting rid of your soreness. Like, you're still going to be sore. Uh, it is good for you to do, though. It does help with re recovery. It does help you feel a little bit better. Loosens those muscles up and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to say they're overrated, though, because you're still going to be hurting after. Just like an ice bath. You take an ice bath, you're still going to be sore when you get out of there. All right, number 25, home workouts. Uh, virtual training, definitely underrated because... You can literally get a good workout at home, anytime, anywhere in your house. You ain't got no excuses. So home workouts, definitely underrated. And if you got a little home gym, that's good too. You can get a nice little workout at home. I got me a little garage gym now, and I love it. So I like getting in there. Me and my wife get in there and knock out a little workout. So I like it. Number 26, high-tech home fitness equipment. So like interactive mirrors, smart home gyms. This is the tonal piece of tonal equipment that I was talking about. It's literally like this big thing you screw it onto the wall and it has little arms that come out like a kind of like a functional trainer and i guess it's hydraulic based so like you can adjust like the hydraulic levels on it and it'll make it heavier or lighter and you can do literally any workout with it so i'm gonna say i don't know for convenience they're underrated because it's small and it takes up a little bit of space but for like normal fitness people i won't say they're overrated because people probably won't use them because it's not like a normal piece of equipment. It's not like a barbell. It's not a dumbbell. It's not a weight plate. It's not like your normal fitness equipment that you think of. So that for that, and they're kind of expensive. They're really expensive. So I'm gonna have to say the tonal machine. Yeah, it's overrated. Like high tech stuff. It's the price is too high for most people in their home gyms. Like most people don't have tons of money to spend on these things. And the more the technology gets, like the more expensive they are. So. Tonal, I'm not exactly sure how much it is, but I'm sh I know it's like a couple thousand dollars. And most people just ain't going to buy that. I mean, unless you're just rich, you ain't going to buy it. But And then some people like like the the metal clanking, weights clanking all the time. They like barbells and dumbbells. It makes them feel like they're actually doing something. So if that's you, then yeah, you don't want to do the tonal. But I do think it's very convenient and you can get a lot of good workout in workouts in with it. But for most people, it's going to be overrated. 27, calisthenics. So body weight exercises that develop strength coordination. So I'm going to say underrated. If you ever seen the people that, uh, a lot of people see them, on, you see them on the internet now, but there's people that do the pull-ups and they do like crazy things on the pull-up bar. Like they'll spin, they'll pull up, spin around and like land back on the pull-up bar or they'll do all kinds of like man ups and things like that. Or they'll hold their body like sh straight out, hold it flat. Uh, to do that, you got to be super strong. Like, you got to be stupid strong. Like, y'all don't understand how hard it is to do that. I couldn't even do that if I tried, and I would consider myself pretty strong. So, yeah, calisthenics are definitely underrated. You can you can get your body really strong by doing these type of workouts. I actually think they're cool. Like, I like watching the videos of them sometimes. People, uh, they do all kinds of tricks on, them, on the pull-up bars, and they'll just do it, like, outside in the park somewhere. So they're pretty neat. So it's almost like parkour, like they do crazy, crazy things like parkour and you got to be stupid strong to do it. So I think they're definitely underrated. All right, 28 battle ropes. It's kind of provide like a full body workout, but mainly cardio. Battle ropes. I don't know. I think they're, I think they're properly rated. I mean, battle ropes are pretty tough uh, and people know that, but you definitely get a good workout in it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say they're properly, properly rated. I wouldn't say they're overrated and they're definitely not underrated. You can get a good little workout in using the battle, rope, battle ropes. Number 29, so exercise as medicine. So like, what does this mean? It's like using exercise as like preventative treatment 
uh, for chronic conditions instead of like using actual medicine. Definitely underrated. If people would just exercise and do resistance training and improve their cardiovascular, a lot of their health conditions would go away and they don't even realize it. Like a lot of a lot of these health conditions that people have are caused from, from obesity. So exercise as medicine is definitely underrated. You can literally, if you would just lose some weight, you would, a lot of your, your health problems that you're having would, would probably go away. I mean, not all of them, obviously, because that's not the cause of them, but some of them would. Like high blood pressure, things like that, it can be improved by fitness. So yes, exercise as medicine, definitely underrated. Number 30. Recovery supplements, uh, t- supplements and techniques. So ice baths, compression therapy, these speed up the muscle recovery process. I, again, we kind of already hit on these. This is kind of the same idea. Uh, definitely, I would say overrated. Do you need to do them? Yeah. Will they help? Yes. But they're not like the end all be all. Like you're not going to feel amazing afterwards. You're still going to be sore. You're still going to have to give your body time to recover. So I would say they're overrated. And most people, like when it comes to ice baths, most people are just not going to do them because they're not convenient. Like unless you have one of those ice bath uh, tubs that literally will stay cold for you, you're probably not just going to go to the store every day and buy some ice and put it in your tub. Like you're just not going to do it. So it's definitely overrated. But honestly, if you had one of those, it'd be very nice. Like honestly, I would, I would not mind having one, but they're kind of expensive. Uh, and I'm not just going to go buy ice every day to fill it up, so... It is what it is. Maybe I'll build one one day. We'll see. 31, online coaching, personal training. Yeah, some of these are kind of repeating themselves, so I apologize. But again, online coaching, definitely underrated. Uh, I think a coach, hiring a coach is not necessary, but it could help tremendously in your fitness, uh, fitness journey. You need that person to hold you accountable. You need that financial burden to hold you accountable. You need somebody that knows what they're doing trying to coach you. Uh, they know how to they know how to help you when you get when you go to a plateau. They know how to overcome that. They know what to tell you what to eat, all that kind of stuff. So yes, definitely hire a coach, especially like your first year or two in your fitness journey when you don't know as much, when you're still learning. Definitely hire a coach. Definitely think uh, it's worth it. So online coaching underrated. Thirty two virtual reality fitness. So this off. So this is like wearing like oculus goggles so like virtual reality uh i don't really know much about this i hadn't really seen much about people doing fitness on this i would say overrated uh just because it you can't see none like how you gonna work out and lift weights and stuff and you can't see none you got the goggles on your face i think it'd be pretty cool uh to see how they incorporate it in there but i don't think it's very uh I don't think the technology will be there just yet. I don't think it'd be very convenient because um, you just still need to do like resistance training. So you'll be able, you need to be able to like see the weights and stuff. I mean, maybe if you was like running or something to that effect, like you was running on a treadmill and you put those goggles on, I feel like that would be pretty cool because you could like run anywhere in the world and you could like run through the mountains of who knows where. Like you could just run anywhere. That'd be pretty cool. But yeah, I think they're overrated. I don't think the technology is there yet. Number 33. Virtual races and challenges, overrated. Uh, I don't think, one, I don't even know people that actually do this. I've never even met somebody that did a virtual race. Um, but yeah, I feel like if you're going to do a race, you need to be there. You need to feel that environment. You need to feed off each other's energy. And you're just not going to get that if you're doing it virtually. So I would say overrated. 34, parkour, definitely underrated. Dude, parkour is very, it's cardio. You gotta be kind of strong. You gotta have good core. Um, so yeah, definitely underrated. Parkour would be a great exercise because you're literally just like running, flipping and stuff the whole time. You're literally working out the whole time you do it. Number thirty-five, suspension training. It's like a TRX. If you don't know what a TRX is, it's basically like these two long, um, I mean, not straps. They're like two long straps, and you hook them up top somewhere. And then you can do like you can do push ups on them, you can do pull ups, you can do like chest flies, you can do a lot of exercises with them. And they actually have classes for these uh, certain gyms. You can do a whole class of TRX workouts. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say they're overrated um, for just because they don't have like you can't add a lot of resistance to them. It's, you're using body weight when you do it, 
And a lot of people don't know how to use them. They don't know what exercises to do with them. So unless you're in a class, you're probably just not going to use the TRX. I mean, I've used it for some things. They're good maybe for like warming up, things like that. But they're they're good to switch it up sometimes, but they're not something I would depend on and do like all the time. So I'm going to say it's, it's overrated. 36. Keto, the keto diet. This, this one's a tough one because people that actually do the keto diet, that actually stick to it, they see great results. Like they do really well with it. So I don't know, I'm about to say it's overrated because most people just can't stick to it. People can't stick to it. It's very hard not to eat carbs. So I'm going to say it's overrated. And then it, for some people, it's not very healthy. But the people that actually stick to it and actually do it, they see really good results. So that's something you just kind of have to try on your own to see if you can do it. 37, counting calories. I'm going to say it's overrated because most people don't do it correctly. Like most people underestimate how many calories they're eating, and then they wonder why they're not losing weight. It's because they're not in the calorie deficit. You're eating a lot more calories than you realize. It's a little bit easier nowadays with all the apps that we have nowadays. Uh, so you can literally just like scan the barcode, and they'll give you exactly how many calories in it. But still, even with that, you still have to have the right portion sizes. Um, if you're not measuring out your food, you don't know – what portion sizes you're using so you really don't know how much to to record in your like count your calorie count app so i'm gonna say their count calories is overrated because people still ain't doing it correctly number number 38 being 10 percent body fat definitely overrated uh not many people are 10 percent body fat it's very hard to stay at 10 percent body fat uh it's very hard to get to 10 percent body fat and honestly people that are at 10 percent body fat or you're not at your optimal like performance level because you're probably going to be hungry. Like you don't have a lot of energy. Uh, you probably just don't feel good all the time because you're, you're, you're having to resi- restrict your calories to get that low. So it's, it's just not a fun time. Unless you're training for like a bodybuilding show, you really don't need to be below 10% body fat. I mean, as long as you're like below 20, I feel like you're in a good athletic, uh, a good healthy Body fat percentage. Number 39, steroids. Depends on what your goals are. I mean, if your goal is bodybuilding, nah. Yeah, I don't have to say they're overrated. I mean, because I mean, there's steroids, yeah, they come with a lot of positives, but they also have a lot of negatives. So that's why I think they're overrated because, yeah, you may get big, you may get strong, you may get shredded, shredded but it's also going to lead to you having other kind of health problems. Uh, maybe later on in your life. Some people take them and never have any issues, but then some people take them and have, they have a lot of side effects. They give you real bad acne. Uh, they, can, they can literally make like your heart explode. I've heard of several people that have passed away from taking too many steroids. So it can do a lot. It can do a lot to your body. I mean, look at, look at people that have abused steroids a lot in their life. And look at them as they get older. For example, I don't know if y'all know who Ronnie Coleman is, but... He is like one of the greatest Olympias, Mr. Olympias ever. I think he won like eight Mr. Olympias. Look at him now. Like he's in terrible shape. He does not look good. I don't, I'm not saying that's due to steroids. I really don't know why he's in that bad of shape. But if I had to guess, I would say it's due to all the steroids he's taken in his life. Like he, he can like barely walk nowadays. He looks all like shriveled up. Like it's just not good. So I don't know. It may not be from steroids. He may have some like other serious health issue. But if I had to guess, I would say it's from taking so many steroids his whole life. But either way, the dude's still a freak. He's still, he's still an eight-time Mr. Olympia. Like, he's a monster. He got some good workout videos out there if, if you ever want to watch one. He's a guy that always says lightweight. Like, he always yells lightweight when he does something. He's like, he's one of the strongest dudes to like ever live. No lie. And number 40, last but not least, just fitness, working out, exercising as a whole. Definitely underrated, dude. So many people need to could use this to get healthier, to improve their everyday life, to improve their mood, to improve their mindset, to improve their body, obviously. Uh, so like, like fitness as a whole was underrated. You need to be doing fitness. Most people, yeah, it just takes a little bit of time out your day. But if you plan for it, just like you would eating or any other thing you do in your day, it's not that bad. And you don't have to be in the gym all day long. You don't even got to go to the gym. You can do it at your house. But yeah, you need to be doing some kind of exercise. It's going to help you be healthier, going to help you live longer, going to help you sleep better, going to help you feel better, going to improve your mood, all this kind of thing. Build your metabolism, stuff like that. So yeah, fitness as a whole, definitely underrated. 
So that's all the 40 topics that I had. Sorry, this podcast is really long. I didn't think it would take that long. I probably shouldn't have went in as much depth as I did, but oh well, we're here now. That's all I had. Uh, hopefully, y'all got something from that. Maybe learned something from those 40 topics that we went over. Sorry, some of them kind of repeated themselves a little bit, but it is what it is. Yeah, before I leave y'all with the podcast, I'm going to end on the quote of the week or the quote of the day. And that quote this week is, no matter where you go, there you are. I'm going to say it again. No matter where you go, there you are. So this quote can literally mean whatever you want it to mean. Like, what do you think it means? Like, think about it right now. What do you, what do you think this quote means to you? You can think of it. Honestly, I can see several different ways you could think about this quote. But for me, what I think this quote means is that uh, life is what it is. Like, it's going to be tough. It's going to be good at times. You can try to run away from it. But no matter what, it's always going to catch up to you. So this means like life is going to have its ups and downs and you got to take the good with the bad. You're going to have good times. You're going to have bad times. So no matter where you go, there you are. So yeah, what do you think? What do you think it means? I want to know. Y'all let me know. Send me a DM what you think. What do you think this quote means? I want to see y'all's perspective on it. So yeah, that's all I got for y'all. Hope y'all got something out of the podcast today. Hope y'all got some value. Sorry I didn't do the podcast yesterday. I know it's Tuesday, but we still got on here and had a good time. Hope, thank y'all for hanging out with me. Y'all have a good day. Peace, love, protein. We out.